Mobile is the future of social. I spoke with Amber MacArthur, author of Power Friending and one of North America's foremost experts on social media about the transition from desktop to hip hop. And Amber says right now is the time for all companies to embrace this technology. I'm here in Toronto with Amber MacArthur, the author of Power Friending, the host of Web Nation, the host of Command N, and also the host of Net at Night with Leo Laporte. And we're here to talk about the uh, future of social in a mobile sense. Amber, thanks for doing this. With ah, thanks for having me, and it's good that you remembered all those things. <laughs> well, I think there's a longer list that we could have gone through because we've been doing this for, for quite some time. And, uh, and as the kind of the foremost expert of, uh, in, of social in uh, North America, I thought this would be a good time to talk about what the impact of social is or mobile is on social. Yeah, well, you know, I think the mobile world is really changing the way people are interacting with technology. There are tools out there like Foursquare. We see Facebook Places, which recently launched in the U.S., and all of a sudden people can check in at their favorite locations, find their friends. But more importantly to businesses, it gives businesses an opportunity to advertise to these individuals. Imagine you go into Starbucks, you check in, all of a sudden you're getting a dollar off a Frappuccino. I mean, this is something that I think people will really embrace, and it's kind of a win-win for businesses and consumers. So do you think that the, the future of this whole social movement is in the mobile space? Do you think that it, it'll, it'll eventually just migrate right into that? I really do think that mobile space is going to have a big impact. Uh, also, I've heard people say that, hey, maybe the internet is dead. Maybe websites are entirely dead because more and more people are depending on having these applications on their phone to access information. You know, I'm not sure that's going to happen in the next few years, but I think that we don't really realize what kind of impact the mobile world is going to have on us. And when it comes to social media, I mean, this is a space that I'm really watching. Well, it, it, it's so big because uh, well, we've heard the promise of this you know, for the last number of years about location-based uh, services, marketing, you're going to walk by a store like this and get bombarded with coupons and advertisements and specials. So we've been talking about this for a long time. When do you think that something like this, when do you think we're actually going to see the fruits of all this labor come through? Well, you know, Foursquare has been pretty popular over the past yeah. few months. But I really think with a service like Facebook introducing places, I think all of a sudden we could see location-based services becoming mainstream. Because in Canada, for example, there are 16 million people who are currently using Facebook. That's a huge audience of people who I think will embrace technology like this. And so I think in the next couple of years, we'll see location-based services go mainstream. So what we've seen out there are a lot of different types of models that are emerging. It's kind of a new world uh, beyond the location-based services. Just what are we seeing out there? So there's check-in technologies, there's games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a difference between some of these services. For example, when we look at something like Foursquare, there's a whole other element to Foursquare that isn't in Facebook Places, which is the social gaming element. That means that you can earn rewards, you can earn badges, and the big thing for a lot of people is that they can become mayor of a certain destination. And we kind of laugh about that, but the reality is there's lots of adults who are checking in who say, hey, you know, I love the idea that I'm mayor of, you know, my local dentist office, and they're competing. And so all of a sudden you have this whole other element. With Facebook Places, there's not a lot of news out so far in terms of how they're going to kind of differentiate themselves, but they are focusing on friends and the idea that, you know, you have these real inner circles on Facebook already. So when you're using Facebook Places, you'll check in and notify your friends that they're nearby, be able to share photos and those types of things. But let's face it, you know, with both of these things, just like we were talking about before, there's a huge opportunity for businesses. Uh, well, I think so. And, and we've seen some of these companies that have really created a really neat layer on top of even these games. So they've leveraged Foursquare's success and, and added that game layer. Like companies like Scavenger, who who, uh, you know, instead of just checking into a location, you actually play a game or you do a, a task. Just yesterday, I went to buy a smoothie from Booster Juice, and I noticed for the first time ever on a store, they had a big sticker out front that said, check in with Foursquare and you can earn discounts. I mean, I think this is the first of many types of signs we'll see around Foursquare, maybe places in the near future, as businesses start to learn about these different technologies. And I think especially for small businesses, there is a huge opportunity here because these tools are all free, and yet you can connect with a very concentrated community of people. There's really no reason why any company looking at this shouldn't be a part of it in some way. Is there, from the dry cleaner to a coffee shop, to a Booster Juice or any other brand? Uh... I'm a big fan of, of everyone using these tools. I mean, if you run a small business, doesn't matter what you do, you can come up with a really creative idea to use these tools. And if you're looking for inspiration, check online, because there's lots of case studies out there. Yeah, there are, and it, one last, 
piece of that is is what about the service side? I'm always concerned that you know, I could walk up to the end of a you know to a to a teller and show her my the fact that I've checked in with Foursquare or Goal or any of these services, and she looks at me like I'm crazy. Like so what? Good for you. I think there's a lot of education to be done here, you know, as much as a business owner may learn about these tools and be able to implement them at their company, I mean, the reality is they need to really train their employees and get them up to date on what's happening because most people don't understand location-based services as much as we may love this. The reality is there was a survey recently in the U.S. where less than 10% of people who are online using technology are using location-based services. So until those discounts keep coming and until major brands adopt this technology, I think it's going to be you know, a while, but it will happen. So we, uh, we're in from the heat uh, in one of what I would consider one of the most social environments, a, a, you know, a coffee shop. And uh, talking about how, what the impact of this social space is going to be and mobile converging together. And what, we talked a little bit about what the businesses are doing with this. What, what else can a company like this, like the uh, coffee shop, do in order to be able to, you know, um, embrace this uh, social side on the mobile, in the mobile world? Well, I think so, there's a few things that companies can do, you know, aside from just getting on Twitter, experimenting with Foursquare, I think you actually have to go that extra step. And you have to learn how to really engage with an audience. And I'll give you a fun example. There is a burger shop not too far away from here that, that I absolutely love. And uh, so I'm friends with them on Twitter and was chatting with them. They said, hey, you know, why don't you come on in and we'll name a burger after you. And they're doing this for all these people on Twitter. So one day they said, okay, what do you want on your burger? I sent them a little message. and all, all over Twitter or all over? All over this area. So they're doing this for anyone who's on Twitter who wants their own burger. And all of a sudden the Amber Mac burger was was born. Uh, so you go and you see this big sign outside of the burger shop and it says at Amber Mac and so it's kind of a fun thing and to me you know that's that extra level of engagement. You know the, the technology is a great thing and enable, enables us to reach out to a community of people but you still have to go that extra distance. Is that where the really the challenge lies is that uh, you know uh, we see people here having conversations and more and more they're bringing in their devices and laptops and it's, if it gets pretty quiet in here, it's because everybody's emailing and, and texting or, or they're using their devices. Is that, is that something that's going to start to alienate people because, you know, everybody's walking down with their with their head down and hunched over? I mean, I think that's a big concern for a lot of people. They think that technology is making us less social. I would argue the exact opposite. You know, I just moved to this neighborhood not that long ago, and all of a sudden I know lots of local business owners. I know people from, you know, hanging out at different coffee shops because I've met them online, and I think that's a really cool thing. I mean, there's one woman who lives in this neighborhood. Uh, her name is Sandra, but I only know her as at Wallabina because that's her Twitter name, and it's kind of fun. You know, I was talking about moving to Leslieville, and all of a sudden she left me a message, and we just became friends and I think you know that would not have happened before technology you know I would not have randomly met people like that and I think that's the really exciting part and that's why it doesn't scare me I really try to embrace it what you used to be able to do on your desktop now you can you, you take it you know a Blackberry or an iPhone or even an iPad or anything with you and and you can have that same experience but when you're walking down the street or you're, you're sitting waiting for a cab or a bus how is that changing the way that people use this technology well I think for a lot of people what's happening is you know they're using different types of technology like you mentioned they have their smartphone maybe their iPad and so they're connected all the time and so in some ways we really are multitasking 24 7 now there are arguments out there that say that multitasking means that you can never do one thing well uh, well I would say that you know I think most people can manage it you can manage you know being on your Twitter account checking in on Facebook doing all those things you know you might run into something now and again because <laughs> you have your head down but I think for most people it's something that they just love the idea that they can stay connected and I also think in the type of working environment that many people are in these days where you're either in an office space or maybe you're working from home you know I think people are craving those social interactions and then all of a sudden we have all these tools that make that possible are, are we seeing much more of this embraced by on the consumer side so far you know more people are using these check-in or location-based services uh, then companies are actually offering uh, services or coupons or discounts. 